And joining us now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Uh, it's good to have you back to get the latest. I want to talk to you about um, some concerns and hopes that Israel will slow down on its military efforts, invasion. But I, I first want to back up a little bit. It's October 23rd. Um, this assault happened on October 7th. And I am curious, as President Biden and the United States shows in the deepest, most blatant way that the U.S. stands with Israel, going there, standing when others wouldn't, quite frankly, shoulder to shoulder with Benjamin Netanyahu, meeting with the War Cabinet, and doing much, much more to show support is the United States also putting some contingencies in place for this support, including a full review of exactly what happened that led up to October 7th, how the guard was let down so terribly? Thanks, Mika. Appreciate being the, having this chance to be with you. I, I would tell you, we're, right now, we're very much focused on making sure Israel has what it needs to prosecute their operations against uh, against Hamas and, and the terrorists that uh, committed those atrocities on, on the 7th of October. And that includes security assistance. That includes sending a strong deterrence signal through additional forces in the region to anybody else who might want to widen this conflict. That's where our, our focus is on. And I think uh, the Israelis will, as you would expect them to do at, at some point, Take a look back at uh, at the intelligence picture and and see where the gaps were and how those gaps can be filled. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And to the degree that we can be helpful in that regard, I, I think we will. But again, the focus right now on the intel picture is making sure they've got what they need, the information that they need, that they can act on uh, to go after these leaders. All right, let's talk about the uh, concerns about a ground invasion, when it happens, uh, how it happens. Uh, what is the United States hoping Israel will do, perhaps wait a little bit? Well, with the caveat that we won't speak for Israeli military operations, I can tell you, as Secretary Austin made clear yesterday, we have been in active discussion with Israeli officials since the beginning of this conflict uh, to make sure we had a good understanding of their intentions, their plans, uh, where they were trying to take things to, to see if, if we could better understand how they've answered the very tough questions that any military needs to ask themselves before uh, they commit to a, a, a large-scale operation of any kind. Uh, we want to make sure we have an understanding of how they are coming to those to those solutions and those answers. And of course, we've made it clear that we'll be willing to, to, to help in, in any way that we can. But it is important to remember that the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, they make their own decisions. They they decide what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. Uh, and again, uh, all we're trying to do is make sure that they know uh, we're here as a resource, certainly for information and context. We've had a lot of experience in this kind of thing, but also from a, a security assistance perspective. Admiral, good morning. Great to see you. Uh, there were two American hostages released at the end of last week. Terrific news. Uh, we know the president spoke to both of them. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any updates on the plight of any other Americans still being held hostage? And is there a sense as to why Hamas let these two go? Uh, I wish I knew the answers to those, uh, uh, Jonathan. Uh, we, we don't have a, a great sense uh, of how many more Americans are in the pool. We don't think it's very many. Uh, and certainly there are dozens and dozens of other hostages from other countries, including, of course, uh, Israel, that we're concerned about it, uh, as well. So uh, we all want to see them get released. They should be released uh, immediately. Uh, now, as for Hamas's motivations, I think I'll let them speak for themselves. And I think you can understand that that when you're in an active negotiation and when you expect to continue negotiations, uh, the less said publicly, the better. We're glad that those two Americans got out. Uh, we want to get all of them out uh, and we want to preserve as much space publicly as we can for that. Admiral Elise Jordan here. The State Department has issued several warnings in the region at different locations that Americans should either leave the embassy if they are a non-essential personnel or not be in the region. Specifically, the Iraq warning really took my breath away. I've never seen anything that dire in a State Department warning. It said that one should prepare a will if they go ahead and they go to Iraq. Can you talk about the threat that we're seeing in Iraq to American citizens, but also are we seeing an upswing in activity by Iranian proxies? Thanks, Elise. Uh, the State Department is, uh, you know, you got to give them credit for being honest with people. They, they have an obligation that they take seriously to make sure that Americans overseas understand the risks uh, wherever they are. And that, that's a key responsibility, that, again, that uh, that they put pretty high up on the list. And uh, it's no secret to anybody who, 
who's in Iraq that uh, there are Iran-backed militia groups that are active there. They have they have attacked uh, our diplomatic facilities. They have attempted to attack our our small fort force presence there uh, in, in Iraq. It's a serious threat, um, and so we're going to be making sure we have all the information available to us. We making sure that we are taking the appropriate force protection measures. And if you're an American in Iraq, not inside the government enclave, if you will, not inside that bubble, you just need to know uh, what the risks are and be very very careful. Keep your head on a swivel. Um, and if you can't, if you can avoid going, uh, you should avoid going. But this is very much tied to the activity from these Iran-backed militia groups. All right, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. We appreciate it.